So we're now recording. Um, today is uh, Saturday, September 7th. It's eight o'clock. Rabbi Brian is not here with us today. Um, and uh, so our, our intern, uh, Lori, is going to be leading the service this morning. So at this point, I'm going to hand the keys to Lori and uh, let you run the show. Okay, thanks. Um, welcome everyone to Religion Outside the Box. As uh, Alex said, I'm the intern here and I'll be doing the service because Rabbi is traveling. Um, welcome to everyone. And if it's your first time here, please uh, know that we are happy you're here and feel free to take part or not, whatever makes you comfortable. The topic today is happiness. And it kind of uh, springs out of out of we've been talking about joy for the, the last week or so. Um, author Pamela Johnson has made a list of 31 types of happiness. Hmm. And as you go through the list, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Just a sec, share screen. Uh, there we go. There, can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. So she's, so, so her, her idea is that we have a happiness set point and that we don't always recognize happiness when it happens. And so she's uh, done this list of 31 types of happiness. Um, and I was hoping that I would have three volunteers who might, uh, might give us an example of happiness some kind of happiness that they've had in the last little while. So, um, Meg, do you have anything? Um, is this supposed to be spontaneous? Yes, this is spontaneous. Oh, well. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um, what uh, many of you, many of you know that uh, my husband has Alzheimer's, and we're on that journey together, and um. Recently, I took over his medications, so I'm, I'm doling them out. And there was about a two-day struggle with him being unhappy that he wasn't doing that anymore. And now he is totally accepting it, and he likes it. And that really did bring me some joy and happiness because it makes my life much easier. That's great. Amen. Yeah. That would maybe go under the um, satisfaction. Um, yeah, type. it's even, it's even more than satisfaction, Laurie. Yeah, is it? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like it's relieved, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, relieved. Um, grateful. Yeah, grateful. And helpful. Helpful. And success, any... successful. Successful, yeah. yeah. Yeah, successful, I was thinking, too. Confident. Oh, that's great. Does Confident. anyone else have a spontaneous... <laughs> Not that Rabbi Brian suggested that we know in advance. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Alex was going to... Yeah, I well, what what I've learned over the last week, you know, or the last couple weeks actually, is is that it's really important to take time off. You know, um, you know, I've missed a couple of Saturday services, uh, most recently because of Labor Day, and then I think two weeks before that because of the car show, and it's it 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 it's it's really important to to take time off, even from things that you care about to do other things that you care about that you don't get to do every day. And, you know, for me, that definitely increased my level of happiness. And it, it, it you know, it also just kind of gave me a, a, a good break from, you know, from, you know, being in a routine. And yeah. that was really, that was really awesome. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm glad I did it. I, I, you know, occasionally I get complaints from people going, Alex, you weren't here, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I, 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 and so I, I feel honored that I missed, but I'm also very pleased that, that, you know, I got to do other things. Yeah. And, and sometimes we feel pulled between different things and it's, it's hard to give up one thing to go to another, but 
but I think it makes you appreciate the thing that you missed more. So um, I see that Janet has raised her hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Janet, go ahead. So the one thing that I've noticed to, that gave me happiness today was, I mean, happiness this week was being random when I was mowing our field out front by zigzagging and going in curves. <laughs> And I know when my I live with my cousin Sue, and I know when she looks out the window and sees the patterns I made, she, you know, thinking I'm a little loopy, but just, just doing something that's not just on the straight, you know, that's a little yeah. different. That's awesome. I used to love cutting the grass, but I didn't have enough guts to go in uh, in uh, a different way. That's awesome. Um. Okay, and we'll take one more. Stephen Key? Yeah, well, I've got one under Celebrate and Blessed, because uh, this weekend we're getting together with family and friends and celebrating our 54th anniversary. Oh, so, yeah. it's, awesome. a, it's, a, it's a lovely source of happiness. That's awesome. We've had a lot of anniversaries this week, a ton of anniversaries. That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, was there one other spontaneous person that I was supposed to call on? I've forgotten. I've forgotten who it might be. Derek. Maybe, maybe they've forgotten too. You okay. designated spontaneous. <laughs> designated spontaneous. <laughs> After Meg wrecked the spontaneous thing last week <laughs> on Rabbi Cry, and she might as well do it to me right. too. Um, Harold and Connie, it's it's me, and spontaneous is that I'm happy and peaceful, and I'm feeling very spiritual by being here today every Saturday morning. Oh, that's yeah. great! Thank you, thank you. Okay, so Rabbi said that I could make this my own service. So the format we're going to be using is a little bit different. I took it from the Unitarian, what my Unitarian church, and it's called the Even Song Summer Service, which it's not in the evening and there's no song. So I have no <laughs> idea why they call it that, but uh, but it's just a little more informal and and we talk about some quotes, but um. Uh, so we talked a, we've talked a lot about the difference between joy and happiness. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um they come to clean your carpet. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. okay. Can we take down that list now so I can oh, see yeah. everybody? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So um, we talked a lot about the differences between joy and happiness, and it was interesting because Dr. Google that I consulted um, had somewhat of a different idea than what we have had said and um, described joy to describe joy as sneaking up on us as spontaneous and unbridled and Google says that it's that joy is a long term thing and happiness is a short term blast. But the That's internet, right. which is always right, mind you, <laughs> uh, describes joy as an inner feeling and happiness is an outward expression of joy. Nonetheless, happiness and joy are closely related. And the author, I'm going to talk about today seems partial to our definition at religion outside the box where where joy is the spontaneous unbridled thing and happiness is the long term long term uh, a long term state of being so i'm going to talk a little bit and then we're going to talk about some quotes um so I'd like to know who who here has a dog? Oh, put your hand up, lots of people. So a dog is slobbery proof that happiness is simple. A dog's purpose is to love and to be loved. 
we know this because the way we react, they react when they're separated. If you're gone for four days, they say, yay, it's you. Run, 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 happy dance, happy dance, happy dance. But if you're gone for four minutes, they say, yay, it's you. Run, 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 happy dance, happy dance. So happiness for a dog is simple. Things to sniff and things to pee on. And you're living a full and happy life. And human things being, to eat. And things to eat, yes. And and being a human, um, human beings tend to overcomplicate things. Maybe if we just sniffed more and peed more, we'd be happier. But I'm not sure if that's going to catch on or not. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, you may not know, there's a Society for Happy People. It was founded in 1998, and it encourages us to think about the world, to recognize happy moments and think about happiness in our daily lives. International happiness happens in August and was established by the Society for Happy People 21 <laughs> years ago. The Society's founder, Pamela, Pamela Gail Johnson, wrote a book called Practical Happiness, Four Principles to Improve Your Life. Happiness is personal. Um, happiness zappers are manageable. Happiness changes as you change, and happiness is okay. bigger than you think. So I'm gonna go through the four things, and then we'll we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about them. Um, I'm gonna just share my screen for a second and we'll go to the next there so <clears throat> un under happiness is personal um gail uh pamela says that happiness is unique to each individual what makes one person happy can make another person miserable in the world of social media we tend to compare ourselves to everyone and we think that what makes most people happy like traveling for example should apply to us, but it doesn't always. Johnson advises us to shed these expectations. Comparison, we said last week, is a thief to joy and happiness. Um, simple things can make you happy, like the food vendors that have samples at Costco, or if a harried sales clerk smiles at you. And principle two, happiness zappers are manageable. It's not realistic to be happy all the time. It's not even desirable. It's important to experience a full range of human mo emotion because that gives our life depth and meaning. What Pamela Johnson is suggesting is there are ways to increase your happiness set point so you notice happy moments even in tough times. You're not erasing those emotions. You're just balancing them out with positive ones. She identifies five types of happiness zappers. Um, unhappiness, stress, fear, chaos, and annoyances, which we've talked a lot about annoyances. We did almost four weeks, I think, on annoyances. And I'm just going to briefly talk about two happiness zappers that are annoyances and unhappiness so we've talked about annoyances about putting some distance between the observance of an annoyance and your reaction to it and with distance you can choose your reaction like muting on zoom if there's background noise bothering you looking at larger contexts, for example so if there's a traffic delay thinking, oh, well, maybe someone's had an accident or something bad has happened, so I shouldn't be annoyed or I shouldn't, I, I need not feel annoyed, not that I shouldn't be annoyed um, or that you're annoyed and, and you don't want to react in a non-loving way. Um, and when someone on their, on their, um, when someone has, you may, may need to reframe it if someone has more time in their hands and they delay you and they want to talk, you can choose to re to understand that they have more time and respond in a loving way. 
Um, and she also mentioned some other ways of managing happiness zappers as such as don't let yourself get hungry or tired. And those are two, two things that, that, that make me not in a good state. So I don't know about you, Janet. Okay. But there's depression. Yes. I mean, that's, happiness zapper it's it's really rough to you know yeah be happy 90 percent of the time when your biggest joy was zigzagging when you're mowing the lawn <laughs> like, and that oh. has nothing to do with anything it's just like you know you go through it but it's i can't say that happiness yeah. zappers are manageable but well and she talks about happy unhappiness and that it's the hardest happiness challenge to manage. So I would say that that's sort of depression um, because there are serious life events related to loss, such as the death of a loved one, a job loss, or onset of a serious health problem. In these cases, Johnson tells us it's best to allow ourselves time to grieve however long it takes and get professional help when needed. Yeah. So that to me is under the depression um, wing and um, and I've learned one thing I've learned I normally do three things I've learned but one thing I've learned over the past little while is to is to feel what you feel and it, it, I was supposed to make sure I said today it's okay not to be okay and it is okay not to be okay and I think I think there's too much focus personally I think there's a lot of focus on on getting past things getting over things and maybe not feeling things like if someone loses someone the first thing people say is we'll go to a counselor go to a counselor but I think you have to allow yourself to grieve and 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 feel that that pain and uh and get help if if help is needed um Ray in reference to happiness zappers are manageable um I would say not always. So the the zapper in itself is not manageable because you have absolutely no control over the zapper. How you respond to it yeah. and how and how uh, how it affects you may be different for each person. But manageable, some of them, no, not, yeah, at not all. always. Not always. When you have a lot of things coming at you from different directions, it can be overwhelming, right? And I think, I think what she's saying is that is that we need to acknowledge sadness and feel it, and uh, and change our step point of happiness. Like there's happiness within sad times. So, and that's what, that's a little bit about what I'm going to talk about next. Um, but yeah, I agree. Happiness zappers aren't always manageable. Um, and happiness changes as you change. It's unique to you. And over time, your life circumstances change, your priorities change, and you change. So there's no reason to expect that what made you happy 20 years ago is going to make you happy now. An example of that is I took some boys to Canada's Wonderland, a theme park last week, and I I just was deciding whether or not to go, and I used to love it, but I decided ultimately that I would just drop them off and go to Ikea instead. So <laughs> <laughs> that made me much happier, trust me. <laughs> um, and the fourth principle that she talks about in her book is that happiness is bigger than you think. And another way I would phrase this is that when most of us think of being happy, we think of big joyful moments, like the feeling when you say your wedding vows or when you find out you landed your dream job. 
and although these times are wonderful, we need and we need to appreciate them. She argues that happiness is much broader than this. That happiness happens all the time, every day, right now, even if you're going through unhappy times. Ray? Oh, I thought you had your hand up again. Uh, no, I'm scratching my neck. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's some happiness. <laughs> um, <laughs> Happiness is when we feel good, and although feeling good can be intense joy, most of the time happiness is quieter and more mundane, but not less important. Happiness is feeling honorable because you let the cashier at the bank know she gave you an extra 20. Um, happiness is feeling content as you sip coffee on the back porch, and or happiness can be satisfaction after cleaning out your closet. <laughs> An example of this is when my mother died, she had maid, which in Canadian lingo is medical assistance in dying. The doctor who performed this act recently ran into my sister at a bridge club and said he will never forget my mom just prior to her death. She asked him how long it would take and he said, it only takes about 30 seconds. And my mom, who was such a lady and would never have said this normally, just looked at him and said, let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> which, was, which was so amazing. And he still thinks about that. That happened four years ago. And he still thinks about that. And she also, um, the other last thing she said was, to please wipe her nose because she didn't want to go to heaven with a runny nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we find happiness amongst uh, the saddest times that we, we are in. And I believe human beings are meant to be happy. I don't know if it's divine will or biological imperative. Um, the foundation of happiness I think is love, loving others and letting yourself be loved, being vulnerable and recognizing opportunities for happiness. After all, we live in a world where dogs exist and free Costco samples happen. Happiness is here all around us every day. So um, I'm going to share my screen and we've got some quotes and we can talk about them um, we can talk about them as we go through them. So, and I would like a volunteer to raise their hand to um, to mm -hmm. say the quote out loud. Experiences happiness, they make their minds up to be. Make their minds up to be. I can be, I can be instantly happy and joy, or yeah, and interesting, by sitting in on my porch swing. Yeah. Yeah, it's yep. those little things that, that, um, Emily, mm -hmm. can you read the first quote that I have? Oh, folks are, read? oh, folks are usually happy as they make their minds up to be. That's by Abraham Lincoln. What do people think about, do, do people think that we have, um, mm -hmm. ultimate control in, in how happy we are? Yep. Yes. People think we have of control. Nope. <laughs> no. 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 I've, I've had depression my whole life. So, you know, it's variable. Yeah, it is. I think when you have a chemical yeah. issue. Is that a, it's an inherited thing sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and I've had, I've, I have depression too, Danny. So I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are times where it's just like, okay, you're not happy today, but I go out there and I still smile at people and I'm still yeah. good to people and I don't punch anybody in the nose or anything. You know, so. <laughs> that's yeah. good. The, the key <laughs> word there is usually, because that could be 20% or 80%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually, yeah, right. It's relative. Thanks, Janet. John, you have your hand up? Yeah, I I look at that and I think <clears throat> it's probably a semantic thing. Folks are usually as happy as they allow themselves to be. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know. 
I have to ruminate on that kid. This is yeah. Abe. This is the way they talked in those days. Yes, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's I don't know. very, very true. They allow themselves to be. Um, Stephen? Huh? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm close to that last comment, but not quite. I, I certainly recognize depression and, and chemical <laughs> processes as as inhibiting, but I also think there are attitudes. I think there are. I've got a daughter who just doesn't want to be happy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's not depression. It's not chemicals. There, there are days she's just not going to allow happiness in. Mm -hmm. uh, she enjoys looking for the miserable and the complaining. And I always try to finish those conversations with them. Did anything go right today? Uh, to just to try to see it. Um, so that that it, that that you obviously it's difficult with chemical issues and other kinds of things, but but we 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 also I think have some control over setting ourselves up into the possibility of being happy today or looking for reasons to be miserable today um, in in a certain kind of way that that puts some choice within what we're doing. Yeah. It's kind of Even it, it seems to me that if she's always looking for the miserable side of things, that's what makes her happy. <laughs> <laughs> happy when she finds the, the lousy thing that she wants to find. That's what makes her happy. I'll have to ask her about that. I'll see her tonight. <laughs> it's kind of like the glass have full, glass have empty. And I don't know if that's an innate quality that we're born with or whether it... <laughs> It, it happens through experience or maybe it's a combination of both, but um, Carol? Aristotle said that happiness is an epiphenomenon. You can't go after happiness. You can go after that wonderful lounge chair on your porch and that makes you happy, but you're not going after happiness. You're going after the lounge chair. You're, you're not tennis, playing a game of tennis isn't going after happiness it's doing something which makes you happy you can't go directly after happiness yeah yeah that makes True. sense that makes sense does anybody else have any thoughts okay um i'm just gonna uh, get asked for somebody to read the next quote by Toni Morrison. Does anybody want to read it? Alex? Don't. Please don't settle for happiness. It's not good enough. Of course, you deserve it. But if that's all you have in mind, happiness, I want to suggest to you that personal success devoid of meaningfulness, free of a steady, commitment to social justice, that's more than a barren life. It's a trivial one. Toni Morrison. Hmm. Thanks. What do people think about, um, what do people think about that quote? Yeah. It's digging deeper. Yeah, Toni Morrison is pretty, uh, <clears throat> is deep. Did you read it again? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's a long one. Wow. Yeah, it's a long one. Um, if you'll put it back up in the screen for a minute, I'll yeah. I'll, I'll put it put put it in the chat as well. Of course, you see it, but yeah. please don't settle for happiness. It's good. In, it's um, I haven't having told not that. good enough. Not good enough. Of course, you deserve it. But if all you have in mind happiness, if that's all you have in mind happiness, I want to suggest to you that personal success devoid of meaningfulness. <coughs> Free of a city commitment to social justice. That's more than a barren life. It's a trivial one. But, but the commit and commitment to social justice can be bringing the happiness. But, yeah. But that's in there in life. I think what she's <clears> saying <throat> is that if you don't reach out and be vulnerable to life, that it's not much of a life. Yeah. If you're just looking for happiness... It just seemed that seems so vapid. I remember somebody saying that that that's all they want in the world is to be happy. And it's like 
Yeah. The happiness comes along with yeah, happiness commitment, is I think. Doing something. Happiness, I think what the author's trying to say, or That's the true. author that I was talking about yeah. was trying to say is that we should it's pay more so attention to so. the happinesses around yeah. us. So you're not going out looking Based for it, but you're 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 uh, yeah. I you're, don't think acknowledging it. I don't think that's right at all. Wrong? Uh, sometimes, you know, I think in many cases, people who have problems with addiction of various sorts uh, fall into the addiction because they were looking for happiness yeah. without meaning. You yeah. know, they weren't, they didn't know they were looking for a lack of meaning. They were just looking for happiness. And I, the friends I've had, you know, that have found their way out of addiction have been the ones that have found meaning in their happiness. Yeah. That makes sense. It does yeah. make a lot of sense. I would also say that happiness has many different colors many different flavors. Um, if you are in such a situation that all you can do is just take care of you and maybe your spouse or your your children, but and maybe that's social justice. It's not exactly what I would think of it, but and that's all you can do. Uh, but if that brings you happiness, truly doing the best, whatever it is you can do, yeah. that's happiness for you. Yeah, Some exactly. people are only happy when they're changing the world. You know, some people are only happy when they're painting. Some people are only happy when they're playing music or whatever it is. But happiness is so individualized with so yeah. many different things affecting it, that I don't know that you can put happiness in a cubby hole. I just don't, for me, that doesn't work. Yeah. And I think, I think happiness, um, that goes under her um, third principle that happiness changes as you change. And what, mm. what makes you happy doesn't necessarily make me happy or Alex happy. Michael? Uh, two things. Two things. I came in late. What is the name of the author that you were teaching about? What's her name? What's the book? Oh, sure. Her name is Pamela Anderson. Or Pamela Johnson. Sorry, not Pamela Anderson. That's the actress. <laughs> Pamela Anderson is completely different than Pamela Johnson. <laughs> she a psychologist? I don't know. She she started this happiness group. I don't think she's a psychologist. She started uh, the Society for Happy People in 1998 and wrote this book. Hmm. Did you have any comment on? Well, you know, the first I came in a little late, and my comment was the 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 um, the belief in the cognitive capacity of the individual to make choices, mm -hmm. uh, you really to have a very strong, uh, I don't know, strong ego or, or balanced life. I don't, you know, it's an assumption, I think underneath it, that the individual is really not tied to mental illness or something or depression, that, that that's not your true state. That's not who you really are. And that you have this capacity to, um, to make, and I think psychologically and cognitive psychology, that that's a potentiality. I mm -hmm. guess along with medication, if you're, you know, both together, if, if depression and is gnawing at you like that. But um, it's a very uh, interesting way of looking at the person as a whole, psychologically. It's, yeah. it's not a mainstream kind of thing, you know? It, it, in my opinion. I think she's, I think what she's saying more simply is just that we should, that there's happiness around us if we notice it. And 
and that will help us. Yeah. Maybe that helps us be glass half full person. I don't know. I don't know. Carol? I'm reading a novel right now by Jose Saramajo called The Gospel of Jesus Christ. And he tells the story of Joseph being do, doing work at the Jerusalem temple, overhearing two guards talking about Herod has said, we have to kill every child under the age of three. He runs home from Bethlehem to Nazareth and said, we have to get out of here. Oh no, we're in a cave, we can hide in there. And he is saved and the other children are all killed. And he is told, you were complicit because you could have told all your neighbors as you ran to save your son. Mm. And that sounds exactly like Toni Morrison. And he, the rest of his life, he, he has nightmares of the fact that he knew that the others were going to be killed and he couldn't stop thinking just of his own son. Yeah. What an interesting perspective. He got the Nobel Prize for Literature. Oh, did he? Okay. Yes. I'll yeah. have to read that. That sounds really, really interesting. I love Who's the you... author? Who's the author, Carol? Jose Saramajo. Yeah, that's I always I always like when they look at the the biblical stories and they take it from another person's perspective how they handled it and it's very interesting, very interesting. Um, John, I want to read you a short quote. I believe that the very purpose of our life is to seek happiness. That is clear. Whether one believes in religion or not, whether one believes in this religion or that religion, we are all seeking something better in life. So I think the very motion of our life is towards happiness. That's from mm -hmm. the Dalai Lama in the book, oh. The Art of Happiness. Yeah, I think, I think I've got a quote from him on there, on here coming up from that book. Yeah, that's interesting. Do people think that it's a pursuit of, that we're pursuing happiness as a sort of an end result to our lives? Oh, Alex, sorry, Alex, go ahead. Well, I, I, I was going to say kind of, you know, riffing off of what several people have said here is, is that, you know, I think Carol's absolutely right that, that you can't, you, you can't chase happiness directly, right? No. You know, it's, it, you know, it's like a bar of soap and, it, you know, like a wet bar of soap in that regard. It, it, you know, if you hold it too high, if you hold it onto it too tightly, it shoots out of your hand. If you hold onto it too loosely, it slides away. Right. And so I think the grabbing at happiness is the goal is, is the, it, it, you know, that happiness is sort of byproduct of good you know and i'm using air quotes here good pursuits right whether it's you get satisfaction from social justice or whether you get satisfaction from going to a car show or whether it, you know whatever your thing is when you're doing your thing and even it can come from work if you're really into your job or into what you do the this you know the it, it, the happiness becomes a a byproduct of being in the groove for lack of a better word but there's lots of there's lots of other things that can pull you out of it right you know as as janet i, I think it was janet who, who you know mentioned depression is one of them but it, a lot of times life circumstances you know yeah. could be that too you know if somebody is being actively mean to you you know it's really really hard to be happy and, you know, that's one of the things that I've discovered for myself is, is, you know, my mother was a very difficult person and she was more often not kind to me than she was kind. And after she passed, I, I realized that things were, were much different. And, you know, I had always thought, well, you know, maybe I just have a negative attitude. And what I realized after being picked on all the time sure. stopped that, you know, I was a lot lighter and it was a lot easier to be content because, you know, I didn't have this big weight laying on me. Yeah. And so I think that there's that, again, it, happiness is a byproduct of being in the groove, but the things that pull you out of the groove 
can be chemical, can be circumstantial, can be, you know, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine if I lived in Ukraine right now that it would be very easy to be happy with bombs landing all around me. So. Yeah, very true. Very true. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, just gonna go. Oops. Oh, um, so does anyone, can someone read this one? I'll read it. Okay. okay. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any set of circumstances, to choose one's way. Victor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor. So, yeah, how, why, uh, you know, I think there's a saying that says something about whatever is handed to you in this world, how you approach it, how you look at it, how you use it, depends a great deal on your happiness. And we all know about the story of Desmond Tutu, you know, that he was, he was uh, in many ways punished, you know, for things that he did in South Africa. Um, one, I think his 80th birthday, he invited the Dalai Lama to come to South Africa and the South African consulate would not give the Dalai Lama a visa. So, um, Things like that. What do, what do you do with what do you do with all the crap that's given to you or dumped on your head in this world? How do you well, he it? went and got a visa and went to India. That's true. So it worked out okay. <laughs> <laughs> Janet. Um, during the pandemic, I moved in and took care of my parents who were in their 90s and took care of them until, you know, my dad died, then my mom died, not from the pandemic, I kept them safe. But while I was doing that, yeah. there was one day, I, I sort of chronicled it on Facebook so people could see what I was going through. And one of the, one day I went, I would have quit my job today if I could. But, you know, because I had a situation and it was like a panic and I had to deal with it, but it wasn't even a big deal, but I turned myself around instantly and went, no, I've got to do this with kindness. I've got to do this, you know, with a smile. I've got, and every day I'd get up in the morning and look in the mirror and in the horrible lighting in my parents' bathroom where you look, everybody looks dead, right? <laughs> and I'd look at myself and I'd look really awful and I'd go to start my day because I knew I'd have to go down and take care of these people. And I really, for, you know, three and a half years in total until they both died, um, was managed to do that and it was some days no some days it's like go walk outside and cry then come back in and do it but a lot most of the time it was making jokes it was having yeah. fun with them it even with my mother's dementia you know just you know slap yourself in the head type of okay ma you know <laughs> just carry on you know who was that over in the corner just introduce me to them whatever but you know make <laughs> the best of everything um yeah. So that was probably the biggest time in my life where I had to take lemons and make lemonade, which I hate lemonade actually, but you know, <laughs> so. Oh, that's great story. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else um, have any comment on the, uh, the quote or anything to do with happiness? I'm a little cynical about it. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can tell. I can Sorry. see your face, Michael. <laughs> right. Sorry. No, but I, I mean, he his history was that he he survived in one of the concentration camps. Victor Frankel. And yeah. Frankel, and I don't know how he did, but he, he was able to smuggle in his manuscript, all kinds of interesting things. And before he, as I understand it, before he did, he was a very right-wing politician where he or, or advocate. So he gets a, a better... Um, the line uh, than, than you can imagine. Uh, so he also had this statement that when I was just very popular, 
He who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. He who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. Well, it's very He nice got that talk. from Nietzsche. Huh? He got that from Nietzsche. Did he? Okay. Well, there, there you have it. So it's, um, I don't know. My sense is, is that what we do here, just having community or how we seek meaning outside of this community. And I, I think meaning means, you know, I'm looking at Rita and, you know, talking about meaningful relationship, uh, you know, having the, the, you know, the, the benefit or the uh, grace, you know, to be able to to have that kind of grounding in interpersonal relationship or trust, whatever is so so critical, and not uh, you know easier for some than others, but yeah, yeah, definitely. I think yeah, and I think she's. I think what she's saying is that we just need to recognize more when we're when we have happiness around us we need to latch on to it and and recognize it and change our like if our happiness set point is down here change it to being a higher set point where we pay more attention and we see more things that bring us happiness ron um in Preparing for today, I did a little bit of searching on the principles of happiness and the pillars of happiness, and I stumbled across a, a book, which I haven't purchased, uh, but came out of the Harvard Kennedy School uh, on uh, the idea of the title of the book is Build the Life You Want, The Art and Science of Getting Happier. And they, what caught my eye was there are four pillars of happiness, uh, family, friendship, work, and faith. And if you can find happiness in one of those, you can be happy and real happiness is being in all four of those. So I use those to go search for poems for today's poetry room so that makes a lot of sense that's a that's a pitch family friendship family work work and what was the other thing they were a family friendship work and faith hey. yeah and you know i guess one of the points is that faith is not just standard christianity faith can be atheism right. you know faith yeah. in science yeah absolutely mm -hmm. rob there's a song by donovan called happiness runs mm -hmm. and it runs in a circular motion and right a little boat along the sea. <laughs> i think the beatles You're singing the song about that's beautiful <laughs> What you know you the want? Beatles, happiness is a warm gun. <laughs> they had oh, geez. Oh, That's no. a good Beatles song. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it means sure. that you can find happiness in anything. <laughs> oh, God. It's so <laughs> cynical. Uh, I wouldn't go for so far as to say that, but... <laughs> Happiness really is. Well, the gun in this case one. is a needle filled with heroin. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yes. Wow. The Beatles were sneaky. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know a lot about music, Rob. <laughs> oh, I enjoy it. That's good. That's good. It makes you happy. It does. <laughs> um, I think at this point, we will, um, Joe, you have a list of people that we're, we're going to pray for. I do. I'll let you take over. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for helping increase my happiness quotient this morning. Um, yes, we do have our, our love and light list for today. Um, we'll start with Judy Love and her family, uh, Tanya and Kelly, Peggy and Spirit and her husband, Ralph, Sander and Amethyst Feinberg, Rich and Meg, Francis, Paul, Joan Dean and Spirit and Joan Dee's family, Wendy, Nancy, and Lorena, Greg, Jamie, Brad, Lori, and Ben, Joe and Ken and family, uh, the Rudnicki family, um, Cullen Raphael, Stan K of Blessed Memory, Irma P, Tom and Eric, Lorena and Yuval and Rebecca. And if I missed one, remind me and put it in the chat. I think I got everyone. Um, we also lift up in love and light those who are in our hearts that may not be listed on it, you know, but they're just here, they're in our hearts. And if there's someone else that you would like to add, please put the name in the chat and I'll make sure that gets on the list that's always posted publicly in Facebook as well. I don't have a fancy dancy clock that Rabbi has, but we'll take a minute to uh, to think about these people and lift them up. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, we will um i think we've sort of sort of done our gratitude for this week um people at the beginning said what things make them happy um can anybody um does anybody want to talk about what everyday things make them happy like sitting on the porch swing <laughs> No. Well, I, I, I'm what I'm happy about um, mm -hmm. is acknowledging the importance of community. And I was a little cynical about that the other day. But now that I'm, you know, facing all of you here, and so many of you, you know, regularly show up, uh, this community is very, you know, I, I may have other issues about it, well, you know, with my cynicism, whatever, but the fact of this community is very, very profound mm -hmm. for me, given my situation, where I'm living, how I'm living now in life, decisions, you know, um, it means a lot. It really does. Thanks, Michael. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're welcome. Our um, Alex. Are you um, able to put people into breakout rooms? Yes. Okay. So you heard Ron's uh, um, little advertisement for poetry. <laughs> so, um, so you, is it is it up, Alex? Uh no, we have we have a couple more minutes. So, oh, okay. uh, but you, if you have any final thoughts, I will go ahead and set up the rooms. Oh, I just wanted to read, do a, a little reading from John and Sarah Mills Paw, and it's called mm -hmm. "Be the Blessing You Already Are." Take up what power is yours to create safe haven, to make a earth make of earth a heaven. 
Give hope to those you encounter that they may know safety from inner and outer harm. Be happy and at peace, healthy and strong, caring and joyful. Be the blessing you already are. Mm. I thought that was nice. And Rabbi Brian asked me, I've said it once and I'll say it again. He asked me to remind you all that it's okay not to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could you put that blessing in the chat, please? Sure. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I will. It's a uh, it's a UU uh -huh. thing. <laughs> Janet. Well, I want to say uh, I kind of forced myself to do this today. Yeah. And it has helped. Oh, yeah. good. It really has lightened you know, the, the invisible crushing weights that come down. It just really has. And I think I just needed more community. That's all. Yeah. yeah community is so important. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, Janet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. all. Thank you, Lori. For yeah, this thank morning. you, Lori. I, I, I think you've put yeah. together a really great presentation. Yes. And I, I it, you know, at the risk of sounding snarky, I hope it makes everyone happier. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it does too. I think just being together makes us all happier. But, it brings uh, our spiritual barometers up, right? right? There you go. There you go. Um, well, at this point, if if you don't have anything more formal, I'll go ahead and close the recording and then we'll switch off into breakout rooms. Okay. All righty. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording at this point.